All right, back on our series of everything wrong with, and we make these videos so you can be aware of certain flaws that uh, might exist around uh, a particular engine. We've got about uh, a couple dozen of these now, and we are doing a video on everything wrong with Merc Cruiser engines. And the biggest problem with Merc Cruiser engines is the people that own them. Yes, the people that own the engines are the biggest problem with the Merc Cruiser. Here we go. If you've been around engines for a while, these engines probably look familiar, and that's because they are straight off the GM assembly line. So we're gonna be talking about the 4.3 six cylinder, the 305 and the 350, or the 50 and the 5.7. These are engines that Merc Cruiser buys from GM directly and converts them over to marine application. Now there is a big difference between automotive and marine engines, but there is some discrepancy between what those actually are. If you think about a car, you've got gears, uh, one through four, one through five, now we're up to eight, 10 speeds. Um, and just like your bicycle, if you wanna make it go easy, you start in first gear and you work your way up. A boat doesn't have that luxury. A boat is either forward or reverse. It is under load all the time, and when it is boogieing across the lake, it is at 4,000 RPM and it is full load. It's the same as driving a pickup truck up a hill, 4,000 RPM, pulling 5,000 pounds behind you. So the Merc Cruiser engine blocks take a lot of abuse. Because of that, they bought specific four bolt main engine blocks so that they can take the abuse. Now, boat engines don't run as hot as these engines in a pickup truck. We have one in our 1995 OBS. It likes to run at 205, 210 degrees. In a boat application, because it is an open cooling system, meaning that the water comes up from the lake, goes through the engine and goes right back into the lake, they run at about 160 degrees. Now the discrepancy about whether a truck engine would fit into a boat or not, it 100% will bolt on and go in, is whether it was designed to work at those 160 degree temperatures. Some people say that the clearances between the piston and the cylinder walls are different because the piston doesn't expand as much. I don't think that's true because the specs to rebuild a Merc Cruiser are the exact same as the specs are to rebuild a truck engine. But if you're an old hot rodder, you know that the four bolt main engines are the ones you want in your muscle car, in your muscle truck, because they are a stout engine. So you can take a perfectly good Merc Cruiser, pull it out and put it in your vehicle and it'll be a nice stout engine that you can build up to make some really nice horsepower. You can't take a two bolt main or a normal pickup truck engine and put it into a boat and expect it to last as long, but it will work. There are lots of people that have taken them out of pickup trucks and put them into boats and they've not had an issue, but there's just as many people who have blown it up in a season or two because they're tubing and start, stop, start, stop, full load all the time and really working these engines. That's something to look out for. If you buy a boat and you do not see this little tag on the bell housing and has a serial number on it, somebody could have changed the engine and you might be getting one that is not going to last as long as an original Merc Cruiser engine. Generally, those four bolt pickup truck engines and car, muscle car engines are not cheap or readily available, but an old Chevy pickup with a two bolt is. We're just gonna distinguish kind of between uh, before 1996 and after 1996. Before 1996, it was pre-Vortec head, and it was your generic Chevrolet 350. The desired engine is a Vortec, and that is the predecessor to the LS. That was when they started figuring out better flow in cylinder heads, and just the Vortec heads, which this engine is, gives you another 20 horsepower, so which is about 10% on the engine. The way to tell if it is a Vortec head is to count the manifold bolts in between the head. The Vortex only have eight bolts holding the entire intake manifold on, which is two at the front, two at the back. They got rid of the, the crossover pipe in between and only rely on those eight bolts to hold it down. 
So this engine is pre-1996 and it's carbureted, not fuel injected, and it actually has 12 bolts holding the intake manifold on. You can tell it's got the two bolts extra on the crossover between the two cylinder heads. And we also have the two on the outside and um, on the front and the back. This winter, we are going to put an LS into the boat, but that engine is getting built right now and it's taken a while to get some parts. So in the meantime, I found this engine online cheap enough and we're just going to borrow it for a little while. We're gonna throw it in our boat. We'll pull it back out again when the LS is ready to go. In a perfect world, we would take the intake off of our fuel injected, plunk it on our Merc Cruiser engine. All the wiring harness, everything would be exactly the same all the adjustments would be exactly the same and we could just drop it in but we can't do that the angle of the bolts are different and the heads are completely different unfortunately this is also a 350 and the fuel injected engine is a 305 so we can't just take the heads and and bolt them on as well uh, because it changes the the compression ratio and it's actually kind of a dog on top of that we don't have the computer for the 350 so then the map would be completely wrong and we're asking for a lot of problems. But the good news is that Merc Cruiser is one of those companies that actually designs their stuff to really be worked on. And kudos to your engineers. The main engine wiring harness plug is actually the same. Your start wire is on the same pin. And even though these have coolant sensors for the computer, on the fuel injected one, they have mechanical sensors for the oil and the water that works with your gauges as well. So there's twice as many sensors on the fuel injected engine as there is on the carbureted, but we just have to unplug the harness, plug it in, and all the sensors will work. And I can verify that by the time this video comes out when we actually plug it in. All right, so with the Merc Cruisers being inside a boat, generally on an inboard, heat is an issue because most boats are fiberglass so when things get too hot they catch fire big problem so they use water to cool down the exhaust so the water comes in through a pump comes up through the manifold here surrounds the exhaust which is a steel pipe coming out here and then follows it out to the boat down to a y pipe and outside the problem is we need to keep the water out of the exhaust as well if the exhaust overlaps it can actually suck the water in through the exhaust and that's a big no so there's lots of ways to modify your boat engine but you really need to know what you're doing there's only certain camshafts that will work on a marine application you can't just throw a generic camshaft in or say you're building an ls for a boat throw a go fast camshaft in it for a car because the exhaust is a huge thing to consider with the risers it's less likely that your water is going to come in but it also has more spots for the water to sit and what happens to most engines before they blow up is they freeze and they crack so if you are looking at buying an engine you definitely want to look for any of these cracks because that means that this drain was not open it was full of water it froze the water expands and it cracks now if you see any of these colors on the side of the block run away this is jb weld and this is somebody attempting to cover up the crack which might work for a season or half a season or the weekend you don't know but it will not last so this being a severe freeze um, means that if you were to replace the engine you're also going to end up replacing the manifolds and the costs add up quick bet on another thousand so the nice thing is that even though these Merc Cruiser engines are expensive, every spring the used engines sell like hotcakes because people didn't winterize properly, um, they do share a lot of similarities with the LS. Roughly being physically the same size, they'll fit in the same spot and the bell housing is exactly the same save from one bolt on the engine block here. You can belt, bolt the bell housing right up and have zero issues. Take a flywheel from a manual transmission and the drive for the outdrive bolts right up to it. Besides that, you make your own front engine mounts because the rear engine mounts are on the bell housing and you already have your LS in it. The more we talk and the older this video is, the more companies are out there that are making the exhaust manifolds for it and the cheaper that will get. So that is our um, avenue that we are going. So stick around, we'll show you guys how to throw a truck LS into an inboard outboard setup. Uh, we are turning a 6.0 block into a 6.2 right now. Our boat will make lots of jam. We can keep up with the Dirt Cinema boys.
So, Merc Cruiser is doing a really good job about building these engines, keeping it simple, and keeping them going long after GM was done with them. They must have bought a bunch of bulk after they switched to the LS, the 5.3s, the 6.0s, um, and the 4.8s and they kept making them uh, much later, I guess the, until, until the emissions caught up with them. That being said, the biggest problem is still the owners not knowing how to winterize their boat. So unless they have a trusted marina that can get to it on time or they have indoor heated storage, to get rid of the water is quite a procedure. We're gonna go back to our carbureted one and we'll show you guys all the spots to, to drain them. All right, so we have a drain on our riser here. So we've got one drain here. We also have a drain on our block itself, which is right here. And we have another drain at the bottom of the exhaust manifold, just in case. Now, we also have a power steering cooler that, is, that comes down here. So this will have water in it going to um, cool your power steering. And if it's fuel injected, it also has a cooler for the fuel system. Now, all these drains need to come out and you need to fog the engine before you park it for the year so that it's full of a nice fog and it prevents any rusting. But there's piles of videos on showing you how to do that. So this engine has a nice manifold here that connects the manifolds and also the block to a very handy drain that all drains everything all at once. Drains um, your, your radiator hoses here and the block and the risers. Um, there's another drain right here to allow the air to come in. So it's a nice quick process. But if you don't do it, <laughs> it's not going to help you. The issue with these is more hose clamps, more opportunities for cracked hoses, and that could potentially lead to leaks in your boat. You don't want the water ending up in your engine bay and then flooding your engine bay. So this takes uh, diligence of the owner to constantly pop the engine hatch, make sure that everything is tight and not cracked and ready to go. The less room you have, the more of a pain this job is, but it's something that you have to do. And um, it is a big regret when you don't do it because you got an early frost. Because this is fuel injected, this is another heat exchanger. And if it was not put away properly and you're buying somebody else's boat, you could have all the heat exchangers cracked, you could have the block cracked, you have the manifold cracked. Basically, you have to start over again. So take good care when you're buying a boat. Take a look, make sure that no frost plugs are popping out. You can see this one tried to, but frost plugs, frost plugs are improperly called frost plugs because they do pop out when it freezes and it does push this out. You can see this one actually pushed out a little bit. The problem is it also freezes here and it pushes out on the block. So I don't like calling them frost plugs because people get the idea that they have some sort of safety. It's not, it's a core plug um, that was used during the casting process. They have to get the sand out and they do that through the so if you find that you did end up with the truck engine hopefully they replace these core plugs with stainless or brass so that they don't rust away if you are in the salt water these core plugs will rust away and you will have water pouring into your engine bay another massive issue all right so that's basically things to look out for for a Merc Cruiser. definitely stick around to the channel because we will be putting an ls into this boat it is a 21 foot bow rider that we want to enjoy with our family. So scoot across the lake, do some tubing with the kids, teach them how to water ski, do all that fun stuff. If it was a cabin cruiser, I would 100% do a diesel conversion. Um, I'd love to put a Duramax in that and maybe someday on the channel we will. For now, we will be sticking with gas. It makes the most financial sense um, for what we're doing right now. If you're vehicle has a diesel um, and you got your hands on a marine diesel they are excellent engines because they are generally higher horsepower than on-road engines their emissions were a lot more lax i don't think i would change to go from a diesel to a gas i would go from a gas to a diesel but i am a diesel guy um, 
That being said, I'm sure I got something wrong in the video. I generally get one or two things wrong and I leave that up to the audience to call me out on it. So definitely read all the comments and definitely add any of your opinions or any of your experiences in the comment section if I got it wrong so we can all educate each other what to look out for. I'm looking forward to throwing that carbureted engine back in it again. It is a very straightforward uh, swap compared to any vehicle. Um, uh, meaning R&R &R the engine in and out and hopefully we'll be enjoying that boat in another week's time or so. So thanks for watching guys. We have a lot more engine uh, reviews out there, gas and diesel, so definitely check those out. And uh, as always, get out there and work on it because if you're not filthy, you're not working on your own stuff, you don't have that pride and you'll never be rich. Here we go. <laughs>